Looking at Getty Online using EE 5G MiFi, today we've reviewed their 5G Wi-Fi device to see if it's worth buying based on its download and upload speeds, Wi-Fi performance, value for money, and more. But before we begin, thanks to 3 for sponsoring this video. Their 5G hub deals offer a simple, cheap way to get online at home using the 3 5G network. The 5G hub offers really good download and upload speeds from our testing, and it's generally the cheapest 5G internet solution on the market. So click the link in the description to the 3 5G broadband coverage checker and put your postcode in here to see if you can get their 5G hub deals at your address at the moment. So EE sells a 5G mobile broadband device that they call 5G Wi-Fi. You can buy it on their website on a contract or a month to month plan with a data SIM included, which you'll need to get online. Once you insert the SIM into the router, we'll explain how to set it up in the next section. The MiFi device will connect to EE 5G to establish an internet connection, just like your phone does. Then it'll create a Wi-Fi hotspot you can use to get online. The device is battery powered, and if it can't connect to 5G, it'll use 4G instead. MiFi devices like this one are a very portable way of getting online. There's no phone line needed, and you can use them anywhere in the country with good 4G or 5G signal. Getting set up with EE 5G MiFi is pretty easy, but there are a few quirks to setting up this device, which it's good to be aware of. The first thing you want to do is punch out the EE SIM card. You want the Nano SIM, which is the smallest size on offer. Then you need to take the back cover off the MiFi device, which can be a bit tricky. It's held in place by clips around the edge, and they can be really tight, especially the first time you do this. There's a small hole in the cover, in the middle near where the USB-C port is, that you can begin to lift it up from. Then you can work your way around the edges to undo the rest of the clips, being careful not to break them. Now you've got to install the SIM card in the router, and this can be a bit finicky. There's this silver flap you've got to push down and then back to reveal the SIM card slot. Then you can put the SIM in position as shown, and fold the cover back into place. A lot of other MiFi devices come with just a slot or something you can really easily push the SIM into. In comparison, this mechanism with a cover is quite difficult to use. But once you're done, you can insert the battery into the device. Look for the six gold pins in the top left and match them up to the same pins on the battery. Then slide it into place as shown and it'll drop down into position. Now you can put the back cover back in place, making sure it's the right way around, then clipping it in around the edges. This can once again be a bit tricky because some of the clips don't like to engage very easily. Once you're done though, you can power on the device by holding down the power button until the green lights illuminate. The MiFi device will now set itself up connect to 5G and create a Wi-Fi hotspot, which in our experience took quite a while. You want to wait until the light turns turquoise before it's ready to use. But when we did this, it went through a few cycles of turquoise to green and back again. So you might want to give it five minutes. If the light doesn't turn turquoise, there's information in the quick start guide about what the other colors mean. But normally this happens because the SIM isn't inserted correctly or because you don't have good EE, 4G or 5G signal. At this point, you can log into Wi-Fi using the login details printed on the keepsake card in the box. And they're also printed under the battery if you lose this card. And before you get online, there's one more step you should take. And that's making sure you have the MiFi device somewhere with good 5G signal. Normally, somewhere like an upstairs windowsill is a good spot. But if you have an Android phone, download our Signal Checker app, which we've linked in the description, with the EE SIM in your device, and look for somewhere with fair or good 5G signal on the EE network in your house. The speeds on offer from this 5G MiFi device are good, but EE is handicapping themselves here. When close to the device, we normally got a download speed of about 100 megabits and an upload speed of about 9 megabits per second, which is pretty good. Plenty for video streaming and file downloading, even with more than one device online at the same time. But other 5G MiFi devices offer faster speeds. For example, using the 3 ZTE U50 MiFi device, we get download speeds about 80% faster most of the time. The problem is, EE has speed caps on all of their plans. Even though they advertise average speeds of 146 megabits, you're never going to get that because all of these plans are limited to 100, which is pretty poor form in our opinion. 100 megabits is good, but it could be a lot better. 
Like with the 3 5G hub, 5G router, our video sponsor, you can see 5G can get more than 300 megabits. So EE's limits are pretty restrictive. If you want faster 5G MiFi, click the link in the description to the ZTE U50 deals page on the 3 website to see what prices they're offering on their unrestricted 5G MiFi at the moment. When you look at EE's MiFi device, you can see it's a fair bit bigger than most others on the market. Instead of being roughly credit card shaped, but a bit thicker, this MiFi device is square, about double the height, and 25% wider or so. Part of this is because it has a huge battery, which we'll discuss later, but we think its size also helps with its Wi-Fi performance. It comes with Wi-Fi 6, and even at fairly long range away from the device, we could still get online with decent download and upload speeds. About 85 at medium distance, and 30 a long way away from the router, on the other side of the house from the device. So over long distance, this MiFi device performs quite well, which is useful if you're trying to get online at home, rather than in a caravan or something like that. The limitation of EE's device from a Wi-Fi point of view though, is it's not the best if you have a lot of devices on the network. If you do, your speeds can begin to struggle. And in this case, a proper 5G router plugged into mains power is going to perform a lot better. So if you're looking for a more permanent solution to get online at home and don't need something with a battery, click the link in the description to the EE 5G broadband coverage checker to see if you can get their 5G hub plans at your address at the moment. As we touched on before, this MiFi device has a huge battery, compared to most others on the market, at 6,460 mAh, compared to the 2,000 to 3,000 that most other devices have, meaning it normally lasts for about 12 to 14 hours of usage from our testing. And it also charges pretty quickly, because this MiFi device comes with a USB-C recharging port, and you can also keep it plugged in and charging while you're using it if you'd prefer. The downside to the battery size of this device is it makes it a bit less portable. Since it's so big, as we mentioned before, it's not quite pocket sized like most other MiFi devices are. So you'll need a bit of extra room if you're going to be carrying it around a lot. EE 5G MiFi is not great value for money when we're recording this at least. There's a good range of different plans to choose from as you can see, but nearly all of them have really high upfront costs, especially if you want a rolling monthly pay-as-you-go contract. Unlimited data is only available on a 24-month agreement, but it's really expensive at £55 a month compared to just £23 a month with 3's 5G MiFi device, which as we mentioned before, isn't speed capped to 100 megabits like EE 5G MiFi. So even though it doesn't have quite as good battery life, we tend to recommend 3 5G MiFi over EE 5G MiFi at the moment. But click the links in the description to the 3 and EE 5G mobile broadband pages to compare their pricing when you're watching this and see which is the best value for money. So in conclusion, EE 5G mobile broadband performs really well, but it's handicapped by EE at the moment. It would offer really fast speeds, but EE limits them to 100 megabits per second. And while it has great battery life, it's double the cost of most other 5G MiFi devices on the market at the moment. So for most people, we'd recommend 3's 5G MiFi device over EE's at the moment, and we've linked to their deals in the description if you want to check them out. So thanks for watching, and if you have any questions about EE 5G MiFi, or about choosing a MiFi plan more broadly, let us know in the comments, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can.